Hey, welcome to today's video. In this video, let's take a look at how we can take a ZBrush sculpt with polypaint, a high-res sculpt, and bring it into Blender for some uh, quick rendering. So this sculpt right here was created by Jeff from our Discord channel. We are currently running the Trolls and Goblins challenge, and uh, Jeff created this beautiful piece uh, for that challenge. I strongly advise you to join the Discord and have fun and participate in our future challenges as well, even if you don't catch this one. All right, so let's uh, let's begin. All right, so here's Jeff's character in ZBrush and he looks absolutely fabulous. I did throw uh, some BPR filters on top of it to uh, to have a nice render here in ZBrush, but this is what I have, right? So the whole uh, character is 1.7 million, okay? We can, of course, uh, take a look. Let's go ahead and turn off the poly paint for a minute. Uh, you can see uh, what it looks like here. If I turn on polyframe, you can also see the beautiful clean topology of all the elements. And this, of course, was subdivided. And there is also a low res version of this character as it was sculpted. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this high res one and we are going to take a look at what is the process of uh, lighting it up, right? So to begin, what I'm going to do, I'm not even going to um, decimate it. Usually, if you have a piece that is well, well above 2 million points, uh, there's no reason why you can't go into Z plugins, go into Decimation Master and just do pre-process current and then decimate it at 20%. That will dramatically reduce the poly count. But at this uh, point in our technology, it's completely not necessary. And Blender, uh, especially 4.5, uh, is not gonna have any issues uh, importing 1.7 million. So for that reason, I'm just gonna skip this step and move uh, on to the next one, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna export this out. And you can export it out as FBX or OBJ. Both will hold the polypaint information uh, from our character. And we're obviously gonna need that to uh, bring it into uh, into Blender. So to do that, let's just simply make sure obviously that you uh, flatten your layers if you are doing OBJ. If you're doing FBX, you could technically uh, export layers, but then you're gonna have more work in Blender, which is completely not necessary. So I do advise to merge the character into one and then export it out. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so once you export it out, let's go ahead and fire up Blender. All right, here I am in 4.5. I believe this is the latest version as of right now, but uh, the process should be the same even if you're watching this later in time. I'm gonna go ahead and select this uh, cube, press delete, and let's go ahead and do file import, and let's just bring in our uh, character. All right, so this is how it comes in. If I wanted to, I can of course make sure that is uh, indeed on the floor, the ground floor. So I'm gonna grab my move, and let me just simply move this guy up. All right, I'm just gonna put it right here. All right, let's take a look. This is what it looks like. He looks pretty amazing. By the way, I do have something turned on in Blender. And um, if you want to, you can do the same. If you go right here, I have something turned on called Cavity. So normally this is how it looks when you bring it into uh, Blender. But I do. I like to uh, see the model as I see it in, um, in ZBrush. And um, with that, I turn on the Cavity. And I think that just um, gives you a nice... Uh, preview and of course you can uh, you also have these four dials you can play with all right You have the ridge which is going to give you these nice highlights. You have the uh, Valley right here, which is going to give you these beautiful ambient occlusion shadows, right? And you can dial this for uh, every model You have this even more of a punch for the contrast of the outlines, which I love and of course you can also control the black lines uh, that are almost like the dark shadows inside each cavity so again, you can dial these up, but this is what I get. So the next step for me is going to activate the poly paint from ZBrush in Blender uh, so I could see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch from the solid uh, viewport shading to the material one, right? Just so I could see. So this is what I have right now. Let's go ahead and select the model and jump into shading. All right, so this is what I see in shading. I don't really want uh, this material or the texture that's coming from ZBrush. I'm gonna go ahead and press delete, right? That's going to reset my color. Let me do shift A and let's go to search and let's type in something called attribute. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and let's take this color one and just plug it into the base color uh, of the material. Go into the name and let's just type in the word color with a capital C that's going to automatically uh, activate the poly paint. And now we can see it uh, right here 
in the viewport and that looks pretty cool. If you wanted to punch this up even more, maybe you want to add a little saturation, you can always do shift A. Let's go to search and let's type in something like saturation. Um, I like this node right here, color, hue, saturation, value. So let's go ahead and uh, click that and drop it right here. I'm going to take this right here and plug it into the color. And then I'm going to take this color and plug it into the base color. All right. So now we have the uh, poly paint going through this uh, saturation node and going into the material. So we have this nice little choo-choo train, right? So now what I can do is I can go into the uh, saturation and I can actually change the saturation value. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit closer so you can see right now it's at one. Let's say I want to do 1.5, for example, and check it out. You can see that the color was punched in tremendously, right? And you know, of course you can decide if you like that or maybe that's too much. Maybe I think it's too much. I can go to 1.2 instead and maybe that's uh, a little bit better, all right? So that's pretty fun. Uh, playing with nodes in Blender is a lot of fun and super easy. You just drop them in and connect them and just see, uh, you know, the result right here in the viewport. Sweet. Let's go to layout. And this is what we have right now. All right. The next step is going to be obviously doing a quick little render. So for that, let's go ahead and switch to the next viewport mode, which is going to be the rendered one. I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And this is what I'm seeing right now. Uh, a couple things. Let's go into the uh, render properties and it's currently set to Eve. I'm actually going to switch mine to cycles. I clearly don't have any lights in here, right? This looks dark and uninteresting. Let's go ahead and set up a light. To do that, I'm going to go into the world light or set up the environment first, right? And under color, let's just select one. I'll just do environment texture. For the environment texture, let's go ahead and say open. Find an HDR image. Um, you can download these environment maps uh, from Google for free. Uh, they're just environment maps. So in this case, if I hover over, you can see it's just a, a sky with some land, right? And this is going to give me an environment light for uh, Blender. So I'm going to select this uh, one that I have on my computer and just say open image. All right, and you can see what that looks like. And right away, you can also see how the light is affecting uh, the model, right? I like how it's affecting the model, but I don't really want to see it. So to turn this off visually, I can go into ray visibility and just uncheck camera. All right, and you can see that the environment is actually affecting the character, but it's no longer uh, visible to us. So we can just kind of focus on our work without worrying uh, and seeing all that other distraction. We can decide if this works or if you want to drop in more lights. For example, I can always go to add. I can go into lights and let's just drop, drop in one one other light. I'll just do an area light. And here it is uh, right here. I can, of course, drag it around. Let's say I want to have a light coming in from the back. Maybe I want to do a little rim light, right? I'm going to park it right here. I'm actually going to uh, let me move this up. OK. And then I'm going to take this, uh, you can see like this little yellow handle. I'm going to take it and drag it towards my character. And I just want to make sure that it, it is actually hitting the character. So let me uh, make sure that's the case really quick. Uh, I can also go into the side view if I wanted to, and maybe I can just drag this up. Let's go ahead and click on these and just align it to make sure that it is indeed hitting the back of our character. All right. Uh, very cool. I like this a lot. I think this is great. Uh, while this is selected, I'm going to go into my lights and the power is currently set to 10. Let me just uh, pump this. Right. Let me increase it to 1200. I can also increase the exposure and you can see by dialing this up and down, you can see how the light is actually affecting the model from the back. And I really want to get that nice rim light uh, for my shot, right? So let's say I like something like this. I can, of course, spend more time setting up even more lights. But this right here uh, feels pretty good. All right, so what would be the next step? I'm going to select the character and press uh, backslash on my keyboard just so I can uh, frame him a little bit better and take a look. Yeah, I'm really liking this. I think this is uh, awesome. Let's go ahead and see uh, what would be the process of actually rendering this. To do that, I'm going to click on my camera. Let me go ahead and activate the lock. I'm going to lock this up. And now what I need to do, I just need to simply uh, move this around and uh, position the character in my shot. This is the frame that will actually render out. Now, if I wanted to control this, I can always go into the uh, output. And right now it's set to 1920 by 1080 by default. Uh, let's change this to something different. Like uh, maybe I want to do a square image. So I'll do 1200 by 1200. Let me go ahead and align this a little bit better just so I have a nice, uh, beautiful shot. I think this is great. OK, we can play with more uh, settings here. Of course, if you're doing a turntable or a video, you can adjust this as well. But I'm pretty happy with everything. Let me go ahead and do a quick render. To do that, I'm just going to go to Render 
and do a render image. All right, so this is what I get. Um, it's pretty good, but I can make it probably much, much better. Um, first of all, it still looks kind of dark. It also doesn't have any uh, reflection, right? The whole thing looks super flat. Let's adjust this a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Let me select the image and let's jump into the materials and take a look. So let me just dial the roughness down uh, and let's play with some of these. Let's go into the specular. Maybe let's just uh, pump this up just a little bit, just so we have a little bit of a reflection. So it looks more like a toy, right? Instead of just a flat color, I, I like that. So we can play with the roughness and we can decide uh, what we like. I think uh, this is pretty good right here. This is fine. Uh, let's see what else we got. We have the coat, right? We can add just a little bit extra shininess. Think of the coat as like an extra reflection. You can see these really, you can see these little sparkles just sort of appear almost like a car paint. So of course you can decide if you like that or not. I can of course dial these down too. Maybe roughness doesn't need to be all the way down for those. Maybe I could just do a little bit. And you can see uh, they are popping up right there. It's just kind of an interesting extra uh, effect. Again, I'm thinking of this as a toy, you know, something that's like sitting on your desk and maybe it's printed and it's, you know, it almost has like this plastic feel. I don't want to spend too much time uh, on it. Let's just do a another render. Now, if I do another render, I don't really want a black background. What if I wanted to bring it into Photoshop and I want this image to be transparent? How would I do that? For that, let's go ahead and jump into the render properties. And under render pro properties, let's find something called film. And let's go ahead and turn on transparent, okay? So that's gonna get rid of that black background. And now it's gonna uh, render out a transparent PNG, which we can further mess in Photoshop, for example. Um, for this, let me just do another quick, uh, quick render. All right, so here's my image. I think it looks pretty beautiful. Of course, I can keep dialing it uh, to make it better and better, but for the sake of this video, let's just take this and jump into our final step, which is gonna be in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna take this image and save it. All right, I'm gonna save it as a PNG and uh, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. All right, so here's my image in Photoshop and this is just 1200 by 1200. This is how it rendered out. But the cool thing about this is that now you can, of course, set any background you want uh, and you have full control. Maybe I wanna lighten him up, for example. Uh, of course, I can just go to image, adjust, go to something like curves, right? And I can just simply uh, adjust this as I want. I can also go to images. Let's just maybe uh, play around a little more. Let's say uh, I wanna do a little saturation, right? I can add a little bit of a saturation uh, easily. Uh, just so we can see this a little bit better, let me just um, add that black background back in, okay? Another thing we can do just for fun, we can, for example, make a copy of this layer, go to filter, let's go to blur. We'll do a Gaussian blur. And uh, what we could do is let's go to something like the uh, layers and switch this to maybe like a soft light and then you can see how it's uh, kind, of, kind of taking the colors and making them a little more uh, vivid maybe I can just turn this down just a little bit like 15 and you can see it's very subtle but I kind of like that um, effect as well you can play around and see what you like if I wanted to make the eyes glow for example I can create a new layer grab my uh, brush here let's switch our brush to something like the soft brown brush Let's dial in the size a little more, grab our color. Let's just select this yellow right here. And let's say I wanna make these glow. I can just simply click on it. And now I have these cool little uh, glowing lights for my goblin. Again, not necessary, but a lot of fun uh, to play with. I can also go to overlay and you can see how it's just kind of punching the eyes, right? All right, so this is pretty much it. Uh, there's infinitely more things you can do in both in Blender and Photoshop, but this would be kind of like the pipeline or the workflow of how you can take characters out of ZBrush and take them into uh, some final beautiful renders. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you guys in our next video.